Hey guys, this is Shubham and today I am going to discuss about the pancreas, actually the histology of pancreas that how, where is it located first of all, some kind, some anatomy of pancreas and how they are secreting the hormones into the blood and enzymes into the ducts and helps in the digestion process and what is the process of releasing the enzymes, what is the process of releasing the hormones etc. So in this video I will try to conclude about that. So here I have drawn the very basic diagram of our uh, gastrointestinal tract that here our esophagus starts from here and which continues into the uh, stomach and stomach continues into the first part of the small intestine that is duodenum. So here it is the u-shaped uh, or c-shaped duodenum you can say and duodenum which continues into the jejunum and ileum and meets with the large intestine into the cecum. So now pancreas it is an elongated organ present uh, between the c-shaped duodenum and it is a mixed gland which means that it can perform exocrine functions as well as pancreas can perform endocrine functions as well. So re regarding this, this is a very important gland present in our uh, body. So it is present just uh, behind the stomach okay, and towards the uh, peritoneum. So here I have drawn the liver. okay. And this is the uh, left hepatic duct and right hepatic duct which meets with the common hepatic duct. And here is the cystic duct which continues into the gallbladder which I have not drawn. So here should be the gallbladder over here. Okay, so this is the gallbladder. Gallbladder. And through the cystic duct it will meet through the common bile duct. And common bile duct uh, will come down downwards and will meet the pancreatic duct so this is the pancreatic duct over here i've drawn okay and this is our pancreas now talking about the pancreas in pancreas these are the uh, panc this is the pancreatic duct and pancreatic duct further divides into the uh, various kinds of duct i will talk about that later but for a while i'm talking that these pancreatic duct divides into the some kind of ducts and will meet the SNR cells and these SNR cells are responsible for producing the enzymes which means in other words it is responsible SNR cells in the pancreas are responsible for the for performing exocrine functions further these cells these are the isolates of Langerhans cells so these cells are the islets of Langerhans so we have three types of cells in this islets of Langerhans. We have alpha cells, beta cells and the gamma cells. So alpha cells are responsible for producing glucagon, okay, which increases the blood sugar level. Now beta, another cells are the beta cells, okay, which are responsible for producing insulin and uh, which is released into our blood. So insulin is a hormone which is released into the blood by our uh, beta cells of uh, islets of Langerhans whenever there is the high amount of the blood glucose level or blood sugar level okay another kind of cells uh, pancreas has that is the delta cells that is uh, delta cells produces somatostat somatostatin and whenever body needs uh, this hormone so pancreas are pancreas is islets of Langerhans so delta cells uh, will release this hormone somatostatin through the with the help of the delta cells into our blood. So this is the endocrine part. So islets of Langerhans, they provide the endocrine functions as far as uh, pancreas is concerned and the exocrine function is provided by the help of SN SNR cells. Okay. Now here I have drawn some detail of this pancreas. So I have enlarged this portion over here. So this is our pancreatic duct. Number one is the pancreatic duct. I have, uh, put the numbers uh, in the various locations over here. So this is the pancreatic duct. Pancreatic duct will continue into the interlobar duct. So second one is the interlobar duct. You can see over here. So pancreatic duct will continue into the interlobar duct and interlobar duct will further 
डिवाइड इन टू द इंटरलोबुलर डक्ट इंटरलोबुलर डक्ट एंड इंटरलोबुलर डक्ट विल फर्दर डिवाइड इन टू द इंटर कैलेटिक डक्ट सो द फर्स्ट वन वॉज द पैंक्रेटिक डक्ट सो सेकेंड इट डिवाइड इन टू द इंटरलोबर इंटरलोबर विल कंटिन्यू इन टू द इंटरलोबुलर डक्ट एंड द इंटरलोबुलर डक्ट विल कंटिन्यू इन टू द इंटर कैलेटिक डक्ट इंटर कैलेटिक डक्ट नाउ इंटर कैलेटिक डक्ट फ्रॉम द इंटर कैलेटिक डक्ट इट विल कंटिन्यू इन टू द सेंट्री एसाइनर सेल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट नियर द एसिनर सेल्स सो these are the centri assigner cells okay this is the epithelial uh, epithelium layer now here with the blue color i have drawn the assigner cells which are basophilic in nature while uh, staining because they have lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum along with that there are many other structures for example uh, they have the golgi apparatus of course they they are the, these are the cells so they have the nucleus too which i have drawn with the black color nucleus they have the rough endoplasmic reticulum they have the free floating ribosomes over there for the packaging they have the golgi apparatus okay they have the mitochondria for the energy of the cell along with that they have the peptides which are very very important as far as snr cells are concerned because these peps these peptides will convert uh, will help in releasing the enzymes into the lumen into the lumen of the pancreas so actually what happens they have the they have some kind of receptors present over here okay so these receptors are very sensitive to acetylcholine and cholecystokinin so whenever acetylcholine and cholecystokinin binds to these receptors acetylcholine so for example this is acetylcholine This is the cholecystokinin, CCK. Now, whenever acetylcholine, cholecystokinin will bind to these receptors, they will stimulate the acinar cells. So, acinar cells will start producing the peptides, and they will start releasing the enzymes. So, they will start releasing the enzymes into the lumen. Okay. So, they will start releasing the enzymes into the lumen for example these are the enzymes okay now these enzymes will flow into the will flow through the centri assigner cells then intercalated duct interlobular duct interlobar duct and then the pancreatic duct and this pancreatic duct if you will see over here this pancreatic duct meets with the duodenum at the point of ampulla of ampulla of vetter and surrounding the ampulla of vetter there is the sphincter of odi Sphincter of Audi over here. These are some kind of uh, muscles. These are specialized muscles over there, which controls the regulation of enzymes. That how much amount of the enzymes should go into the duodenum. So these sphincter of Audi are responsible for the regulation of enzymes over there. So like that, the enzymes will come into the lastly into the pancreatic duct and pancreatic duct. actually i'm talking about here so this structure is the enlarge over here so the enzymes will come into the through all the uh, acinar cells these enzymes will come into the pancreatic duct okay and this pancreatic duct will have these enzymes going to the duodenum and what will do what will they do in the duodenum actually and what kind of enzymes are these first of all these are the inactive enzymes for example trypsinogen so these are the trypsinogen or chymotrypsinogen so these are the inactive enzymes which should not be or which must not be active in the pancreas they must be active in the duodenum only because before the duodenum before the small intestine we have the stomach over here and the stomach we have the gastric contents which is very acidic in nature okay so the acidic content uh, is spilling into the duodenum which is the first part of the small intestine so in the duodenum actually for the digestion duodenum needs the alkaline medium so these enzymes with the help of enterokinase they convert into the inactive enzyme into the active enzyme for example trypsinogen is an inactive enzyme 
and enterokinase will convert the trypsinogen into the trypsin which is an active form of an enzyme for example chymotrypsinogen into the trypsinogen so enterokinase will convert this uh, inactive enzymes into the active one trypsinogen into the trypsin and they will help in the digestion process one more thing that these are these were the intercalated disc over here so they also have some kind of receptors over here so they have the receptors for the again for the acetylcholine acetylcholine as well as secreting secreting so now how they are going to help in this situation that acetylcholine secreting whenever they bind to these receptors which are present over the near the intercalated duct actually so they will start producing the bicarbonate ions and releasing into this duct so the bicarbonate ions there will be the bicarbonate ions along with the enzymes coming from the acinar cells so these enzymes mix up with the bicarbonate ions and will flow through these ducts intercalated ducts interlobular ducts interlobar ducts okay and into finally into the pancreatic duct this is coming all over, all through the way so and this pancreatic duct meets with where meets with the ampulla of water in the duodenum and its picture of water its picture of odi controls the regulation of these kind of enzymes and bicarbonate ions and now bicarbonate ions is responsible and is very much important uh, in converting the acidic medium into the alkaline medium so the acidic content which is spill into the duodenum which is spill into the small intestine so bicarbonate ions will help duodenum to alkaline the environment so alkaline medium is uh, very much needed for the duodenum for uh, initiating the digestion process so that's why they are spilling the bicarbonate ions and the enzymes along with the enzymes and bicarbonate ions inactive enzymes and the bicarbonate ions will go into the duodenum and will initiate the process of digestion over there so this is the significance this is how, how that SNA cells are working and they are performing their exocrine functions however if some kind of pathology occurs uh, in any patient so uh, for example uh, some gallstone obstruct uh, causing the obstruction for example in the cystic duct or in the hepatic duct or in the common bile duct so there will not be uh, the pancreas will not be able to compensate the situation so there could be the activation of these inactivate, uh, inactivated enzymes into the pancreas only that can cause the auto digestion of these enzymes so that can cause the auto digestion of the pancreas actually and which can cause the inflammation of the pancreas that is acute pancreatitis and which if left untreated it can convert into the chronic pancreatitis too so these enzymes which are in the inactivated form they must not be activated in the pancreas they must not be activated in the pancreas they, they should be activated only in the duodenum so if they will get activated in the pancreas they will cause the autorization of pancreas and will cause the inflammation and can cause eventually acute pancreatitis or the more serious one chronic pancreatitis and if chronic pancreatitis also left untreated so it can cause the various kind of complication for example abscess of various glands and the pancreatitis too so this was about the exocrine functions endocrine functions i have already told you that uh, endocrine functions uh, islets of langerhans they are responsible for the uh, endocrine functions of the pancreas for example uh, there is the alpha cells beta cells and gamma cells alpha cells are responsible for producing the glucagon beta cells are responsible for producing the insulin and delta cells are responsible for producing the somatostatin uh, and releasing them into the blood according to the need of our body so this was about the uh, pancreas and about the histology and some kind of anatomy physiology of the pancreas i hope you like this stuff thanks for watching this video and keep watching